Good evening, my name is Ray Broadhead. I'm head of school of web. Many of you have probably seen me before, and I promise we'll get you out in time for the first updraft of the Predators game, right, Julie? We'll make it there. <laughs> well, okay, good, good. I'm just kidding, we'll be fine. But, but thank you for being here. And this is just really the beginning for you from learning about web. It's, it's a process. It's not, you're not going to know everything after this night, I promise you that. But please feel free anytime to ask us questions when you have problems, something's coming up. There's many, many people here who can help. Admissions usually gets bombarded because you know them best, but they pass it along to us. So please ask questions along the way. You're going to hear a lot of things tonight. There's no quiz at the end. Everything's good. So don't worry. But uh, it, it really is. It, it takes a little while to get used to it. It's a, it's a different place. But we're, we're delighted you're here. We're going to get many different people from, from my staff, my administrative staff tonight. It's a good team. And um, I look forward to hearing it as well. So thank you again. And I turn it over to who to, to you. Yes, Take, we can turn it over to Ms. Norris. I'll, I will say a few words about her real quickly. Thank okay, you, Mr. Good. Broadhead. Okay. And, and as Mr. Broadhead mentioned, we are excited to, for you all to meet um, some of the wonderful people at Web outside of the admissions office so that now you can call them with all of your questions. <laughs> um, no, we'll be working all summer, actually, so don't hesitate to call us. But this agenda does have all of the people speaking to email addresses, so if you have specific questions about something they covered, that was not clear, maybe you didn't hear, shoot them a quick email now before school gets out because they are still responding to emails. Um, so um, I'm excited to start the agenda and we're gonna try to get through this very quickly. And we will record this and send it out to everyone. So you will be able to, to rewatch it if you need to go over the processes again. Um, many of you already know Amy Norris. She's not a stranger to our new families, but you probably don't know that she's our current co-president of the WSPA, which is our Web's Parents Association. So uh, she gets to be speaking to you today in a different role about our parent um, association and volunteer program. So, so becoming a new parent, student at Web, it takes a community here. And we all try to be a great community and great outreach to our students and faculty and staff here at Web. So a few things that WSPA does is um, we are very welcoming. Um, if you have any questions, concerns that you want to speak to a, another parent about, you know, feel free to contact any of us on the board and we will answer any of the questions that you may have. Um, but a few things that we do, a few of our events are the Bells and Buckle Gala. That's normally in February, so mark your calendars sometime the first weekend or second weekend of February. We have a great event. It's our largest fundraiser for W, our only fundraiser that we do for WSPA. Um, a great evening. It's normally in Murfreesboro. Um, and all of the proceeds, we do like a silent auction and a live auction, um, have dinner. Um, just a great time for us all to celebrate things for web. And the proceeds that we make from that event, we give back to the faculty and staff. So um, we just gave bonuses this, a couple months ago, and they were very well received. And it's a great way, a great opportunity for the parents to be able to give back to our faculty and staff. And um, we also have a uniform exchange sale um, that will be during the orientation. So um, the students that we have now, when they outgrow their clothing, they can turn them into the WSPA uniform exchange sale, and it gives other parents opportunities to go buy things that are slightly used at a discounted price. Um, Snack Depot is a way that we love to get our um, students' attention. During exams and uh, midterms, we always set up for two days. We um, ask parents to donate food, bring food in, and we feed all the students during exams. So it's, sometimes they're nervous about tests, they need a snack, so we always have a great smorgasbord of food. So that's another way to get involved. Um, our teacher appreciate, appreciation baskets that we do every year, we do it in November right before Thanksgiving, and those are things that parents can donate um, like pens if you have a business, um, you know, any kind of office supplies, any kind of homemade baked goods, all of our faculty and staff love that. So we assemble all of those and give those out before Thanksgiving. It's greatly appreciated. Um, campus decorations, we decorate in the fall and then we also decorate um, for Christmas. So those are ways to get involved as well. And then, does anybody have a Kroger card? Kroger, um, we have a program with Kroger and we get 4% back, so you can register your current Kroger card um, to be able to give back to the web, so that's a way grandparents and stuff can also help. So, I want to welcome you all and I'm turning it over to Amy Hooper. My name's Amy also. I work in our admissions office too. 
Um, two other volunteer opportunities that we have that kind of run through our office are our parent ambassador programs. If you were here for visitors day and got to visit with a current parent um, or had one call you or reach out to you when you were going through your admissions process, those were our parent ambassadors. We have another group that they like to work with families once you've chosen to become part of the web community, our parent liaisons. And so each of our new families is assigned a current web family that will kind of adopt you as you join the web community. So late June, early July is when you should expect to hear from them. Um, they usually reach out before orientation and we'll make plans to meet you here when we have um, a big meal on orientation day and just kind of encourage you to come to the you know some of the different tailgates that happen at football games that aren't necessarily organized by the school but are organized by the parents and are such fun parts of, of, of our, our life at web here so be expecting to hear from them late July early August and if you've got questions before then like Ms. Harris said call the admissions office He doesn't really need an introduction, but well, he's popping up here quickly. But Mr. Garcia is really our main event tonight. Yeah. Thankfully, he's a wonderful speaker and very loud. <laughs> oh, <boy>. loud. <laughs> so, no, he is. Um, you guys have probably already heard him speak, but he has a lot, as you see, on the agenda to talk about. Um, so, so, um, Obviously, all the packets that you have received tonight have the information that we're going to be discussing today. Um, so you don't need to pick up extra copies, but you're more than welcome to take extra copies. Um, Mr. Garcia is going to talk about some of our basic things like school calendar, the daily schedule. These are things you're, you need to be familiar with prior to coming. Um, as I mentioned in my emails, we're going to have a new student orientation. So I'll talk about that real quickly while they're setting up. That will be the Saturday before school starts. We have to wait until all the boarding students come to campus and all of our international students come. But you and your child will have an orientation leader that will take them around campus and show them all of their classes and you'll get to meet all of their teachers. And so they don't have to worry about where to go that first day of school. Kind of help them with that schedule, daily schedule. So um, that's going to be a great event. Ex expect to be here all day. So. It is a mandatory event. If you have a major issue and cannot attend, let me know. But we do expect all new families and students to attend that event. Um, you ready? All right, okay. yeah, perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I'm James Garcia. This is my 18th year. I've met a lot of you through uh, <coughs> visitors days and everything like that. Um, just to add confusion to your day, though, come July 1st, I'm actually transferring into a new position. Um, and Ms. Sakari over here will be, she's right, currently our Dean of Faculty. She's going to be kind of taking over two positions, being the Dean of Academic Studies. Did I get that correct? Academic Affairs. Academic Affairs. So um, when you get an email July 1st from her, you'll, that's, uh, that's who it's coming from. So she's here to kind of, kind of listen to it. And, and, uh, but uh, if you ever need anything, my email, like Ms. Harris said, my email is there. You're, you're more than welcome to reach out to me in time. Um, so um, the first thing I'll, I'll kind of start out with is uh, our school calendar. I think you, there's a copy back there, um, kind of condensed like that. We do ask that you follow that carefully. You'll notice the exam dates and everything like that. We do, you know, want your kids taking exams. We do want them in school. Um, so please make sure you follow that carefully. Um, and, um, you know, when planning trips and everything like that, you know, we do give ample vacation time. So we do ask that you follow that. Um, and then uh, the other thing that you've uh, probably already picked up seeing is the day schedule. Uh, I'm going to try to bring it up right here real quick. Sorry, I should have set up first. I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. But our schedule, uh, if most of you have seen it, is um, we kind of have the best of both worlds. I, I've talked about this before where we have both block days and we have days where all the classes meet. Um, and a lot of this stuff can be found on our school website, and also I'll talk about RenWeb in a second, um, where all this can be found as well. And so there's our, there's our daily schedule, and, and uh, I always kind of joke around, if you can solve this, and your kids are ready to graduate web, but it, it does rotate. Um, and Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays, all your classes will meet. Now, one great thing about web, and you kind of hear kids saying this, you be like, what are you talking about? Is when, once the school year kind of gets rolling, uh, Monday and Fridays we usually have a, what we call collaborative days. So a, a department uh, will actually, their classes will not meet, and if your, your uh, students in middle school will have a study hall. If they're in high school, they'll have a free period. 
uh, which is crazy for me coming from a public school background. I didn't know what free meant. Uh, we had to be somewhere for time, but they have free period. They come to the library, they go to the gym, uh, they go to the student center with their friends. Um, but they have those collaborative days, and, and it's, it's sort of unique to web. And we like, we like it because our departments can meet. They take a the time to talk about kind of what they're doing in their classes. So if your kid comes to you and says, oh, we don't have math class on Friday, we have a collaborative day, just know that's, that's what they're talking about. And it rotates in a schedule. Uh, it, it, it's rotated. It will be on the academic calendar that you'll get uh, emailed, and it will be on, online. Um, and then you'll also notice uh, we have chapel that meets four days a week. I'll talk about our Emerging Voices program later. And then Tuesdays, uh, we actually have faculty meetings or academic council meetings or residential meetings. So school actually starts 30 minutes later uh, that day. And so uh, I think back there you'll see a bus schedule. Um, that's something just to keep in mind. That's uh, buses will pick up 30 minutes later on Tuesdays. Um, and every other day of the week will be the same, but Tuesdays will always be 30 minutes later. Okay, is there anything else you want me to say about the bus schedule? I didn't know if that was pretty much what you want me to cover as far as that. They will have the option to sign up for the bus in okay. their online enrollment forms if you want to repeat that. Yeah, so when, I, so when your online enrollment forms come, you will have the option to sign up for your bus. There is, there is a fee, uh, it's back there, you, you definitely want to look at that. Uh, but as far as the academic day, bus is really affected on that on that Tuesday. Um, and, and Tuesday and Wednesday, you have block periods, so it's kind of nice, it's longer periods. Um, science teachers usually do labs. Me being an English teacher, I, do, I like to do writing workshops. Um, so it kind of gives teachers a lot of flexibility to, to be created in the classroom. It gives us the best of the best of both worlds. Let's see, one of a couple other things. Um, so one word you're going to hear a lot of when you're here is RINWEB. Uh, that is our online system um, that we use for our gradebook. I'm going to quickly show you. You're going to get an email about this, so if you want to kind of doze off real quick, you can. Uh, but <laughs> I'm going to try to show you how, to, how you're going to sign up. Um, I can't, we can't really go into it. Whatever email you use while you're enrolling, that's what's going to help you enroll into RINWEB. Um, so, this is really all, it's, it's very, very simple. Uh, you just go to rinweb.com, you go to login, and you're gonna see what, down here we call Parents Web. You just click on that. And our district code is TWS, the web school, uh, dash TN, um, and that's, and then you type in your password and everything, but to create one, you just go down here, create a new Parents Web account, you click on it, and whatever email you use to enroll, that's the one you're going to use. And create an account. It's going to send an email to you, and it's going to give you step-by-step -step instructions of how to set up RinWeb. This is important to set up. Um, you can, your kids and you can share the same password. It's, it's fine. Um, but it shows you, and I'm going to go through that, but it's going to show you lesson plans, homework, current grades, uh, all, that good, all that stuff. While he's pulling that up, I want to add that doing the RANWEB login for your online forms, it only allows us to let one parent do those forms. That way, parents aren't duplicating info. So if you follow the instructions that are in the packet to set up your RANWEB and do the online forms, if it's not giving you access, it's because we picked the wrong parent. We didn't, we're trying to pick which one we think is the one that's going to do it. So just give us a call and we can change the responsibility to the parent who is going to be doing the online form uh, with us. I hope that makes sense. So this is kind of what you'll see once you enroll uh, onto RINWEB. And right over here you'll see uh, the current grades. Um, you'll see what their homework is over here by subject. You can go into lesson plans. We don't break down our lesson plans like you've probably seen public schools, oh, lesson 2.1, all like that. It's just sort of a brief description of what the teacher is doing that day. Um, and like I said, you'll see their homework down here. If you want sort of an in-depth of what's going on in, in the classroom as far as their grades, all you do is click on the subject. Nope, that's not right. That's the teacher, sorry. If you want to know the teacher is, uh, just click on the grade right there. And breaks down assignment by assignment what they have and everything like that. I do caution you that you don't be that parent that checks it every two seconds. Your kids don't need that pressure. Okay, there's gonna be ups and downs, I promise you, but it's there for you. And if you're one of those parents, uh, like Ms. Solms, who's about to speak, who never checks it, I always ask her, I said, Can I borrow your parent web login? She goes, I don't know it, I never check my kids' grades. Um, uh, 
we push out progress reports every two weeks to you. So you'll get an email that comes right to you. It'll be a progress report. You click it, bam, it opens up. You have the grades right there. So even if you don't want to, you know, check this, we're gonna we'll push it towards you. Um, so as far as our school calendars and everything, everything is on the website. But we're actually sort of we want kind of a one-stop shopping here. So we're starting to put a lot more of our resources on and right for you. Um, so in the future. Also, oh wait, one thing I did want to tell you, um, when you get an email from Mr. Kari this summer, uh, this, you'll get this, this will be your, uh, your, your kid's schedule right there, and it's, it's, it's confusing, they'll struggle, <laughs> but I will tell you, on orientation day, it's, it's very nice, you'll actually get a student, um, a student leader who will walk you class to class and go through your schedule with you and show them where it is. So don't panic when you get this and be like, what am I looking at right now? They will walk you through it. So it's kind of, it's kind of nice on the orientation day. Make sure you wear walking shoes that day though. Um, And this is sort of what I was talking about. If you just go to resource documents, you have the bus schedule right there, curriculum guide, there's our daily schedule, you have our student handbook. Um, so everything's going to kind of be under that resource uh, document. Sometimes we have special schedules. Um, you know, we'll send out a special schedule, I'll send it to the students. Um, we'll also have the weekly newsletter that we send out every Thursday, but you can go right here and check it. And when, when I say that special schedule, it's like tomorrow our strings has a performance. So we, we push our chapel to the end of the day. So this, this kind of schedules like that. Um, so you, you'll have kind of access to this um, as, as a parent, and you can just uh, check everything right there. Um, trying to think if I missed anything. I think I'm pretty good, Julie. Is there anything? anything Did you I'm... discuss the scheduling, the academic scheduling? Yeah. So basically. Uh, when you're enrolling, you'll get kind of a packet that will, will ask, you know, what classes. Now, ultimately, I'll look at the student's file and, and sort of, uh, having done this, sort of make the best placement for your child. Um, but, you know, there may be, there'll be some options for you, you know, what type of foreign language, maybe what type of, you know, if they want to take springs. Um, and so you'll be getting that from the admissions office. They I'll have be getting them that. In their hands tonight. You have it in your hands tonight. And so uh, I'll be helping the schedule. So that's a big, a big time if you're not, it, that's a good time if you're, kind of don't know, that's a good time to email me um, and say, hey, we're not really sure about this, can you help us through this process? I'll be more than glad to, uh, to help, help you through it. Now, when you come back next year and you know what's going on and everything's exact, we actually do this online. You'll have an online enrollment, we do it through RINRED, um, you can just schedule the classes through that. This is the first year we've done it, it's gone actually extremely well, so we're very pleased with that process. So, um, do you want me to take questions now or say till sure. the end? Are there any questions uh, so far? Yeah, don't be shy. All right. Well, I'll pass it on to Miss Owens. Our uh, oh yes, sir. Once you're, it's open right now. Once you're, uh, so I don't have to be enrolled or anything. It's that enrolled, right? Yeah. Once you're enrolled, you get yeah, you're, you're good to go. You, you can register right now. Yep. We would love for you to do it right now. Yeah, sooner, right. sooner the better. It's already got a seat on there. Will the new seat show up? It will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any student you have here, yeah, they'll show up. Medical release forms are they? We're about to go in. On the the first page with the letter from the admissions office with a step by step, it'll tell you the instruction for each thing. It says because the medical forms are actually mailed into our dean of students office. The academic form is actually mailed into the admissions office, so there's kind of a step-by-step -step instruction. And I'll pass it on to you. Oh. Yeah. Well, I did want to add that the Red Web app that I'm showing you, this is the desktop version. There's a phenomenal app that you actually can purchase. Um, I think it's like $4 for a family to purchase the... Raymond maybe can talk about $5 that. $5 for a year. $5 for a year. Thank you. Yeah, and that's what all the students use. They use it on their phone. They they were <laughs> they really go to the desktop. So. so you guys can access it right on your smartphone. See the grades. Um, see
see the homework right on your phone. So I highly also recommend it. You can't do the online enrollment forms on the mobile app. You have to do it on the desktop. But I highly recommend downloading the app and paying for that. So with the app, can you multiple users? Yes. Yeah. Only five dollars per family. And, and like Mr. Garcia said, you guys can come up with one login and password that everybody uses, but it, the, actually everyone can have their own <coughs> login and password. Sometimes siblings don't want their, their sibling to see their grades, so you can make your children have separate logins um, instead of using the family login. Uh, on that option, when you go to the Brain Web homepage and it says set up a new account, it's either set up a new parent account or set up a new student account. You click on which one. But a lot of students use the parent account. Yeah, they So, okay. So, I will start by saying I don't check my own children's grades because I'm checking everybody else's children's grades. So, uh, again, I'm Tanya Sellers. I'm the middle school head. I'm the Focus 6 teacher. And I will start by saying that all incoming 6th grade students do take Focus if they do not take strings. And I uh, said on Visitor's Day, uh, Focus is a class made up of reading, writing, study skills, and technology. And so I spend about a quarter teaching your students online safety and some common practices to keep themselves safe while they are browsing online or researching online. And then also we talk a lot about study skills in the school year. We also read four novels that support the honor code and other subjects um, across the curriculum. Tonight you will be getting a school supply list and it is condensed across the whole middle school, but don't stress and go buy lots of things even before, before school start because they will get a binder on day one, and I think Mr. Pryor is going to show you what that looks like in the backpack in a few minutes. But within that binder um, on day one, they're going to receive their actual printed out schedule that Mr. Garcia showed you just a moment ago. They're going to get their after lunch rotation schedule. They will get a homework planner and go over that and focus on how they need to write that out weekly because research shows they are more um, responsible if they do handwrite it, not just look on RingWeb and learn to strike it out when it's finished or circle big projects that are ongoing over time. Uh, they also get an extra help log where they can keep a record, a running record of seeing the teachers after school so that if you call me and you say, or any of the teachers for that matter, and you say, you know, is Susie going to see Miss Wyndham? We can say, well, we'll look, and Miss Wyndham can verify that that is correct because her signature is already on that extra help log. Um, they will also get a set of study tips for the beginning of the school year, just some good practices, as well as exam review things. In the binder, um, they will also receive a downtown permission form if they don't have outstanding academic work and they haven't been in any behavioral infractions. They can go downtown, but they cannot cross the railroad tracks. They can only go uh, to the ice cream shops and such on this side of campus. Um, and again, if you have filed one in the past with a sibling, I do have to have a new one on file every year. The middle school right now has a policy where we do not allow cell phones during the academic day. So if they bring them to campus, we ask that they are out of sight. They can leave them in their bags, and obviously there will be occasions where they will need permission to call or text you all. You can certainly call or text me, I can get that to them, or we will grant them permission if need be um, to, to get with you all on the cell phones. Also, there are times in the classrooms where teachers want them to use the cell phones or devices to research or find things online, and certainly that is with teacher uh, discretion. Mr. Pryor is going to talk to you all in a few moments about um, a sixth grade pilot program this year where we will include Chromebooks in the sixth grade. Declamations is a fun thing that sixth graders are often very nervous about, but it's actually a wonderful growing time, and they learn a great deal of confidence when they conquer that fear of public speaking. They will decline in front of just the middle school, and so it's roughly 100 people, and it is amazing to see their growth throughout the year. And then at the end of the year, we take a field trip to Let It Shine Gymnastics in Franklin, and we let them jump out all their wiggles and celebrate the great accomplishment. Um, when you were here on Visitor's Day, you probably heard, and I'll just remind you that there is an extra help time from 3.05 to 3.50 every day. The teachers are here for your students to go in and get one-on-one -on -one help, or they could even go in with their partners if they're working on a project, and the teachers are there to help guide them along the way and answer any questions that they have. Again, I'll echo Mr. Garcia mentioning that there is a collaborative study hall on Mondays and Fridays, and that is another time the students can work together some um, 
on different things or study together. There is also an upper school, middle school tutor and mentor program. So if your child comes in, let's just say in the eighth grade, and they're having a problem in eighth grade history, I'll just throw out Mr. Falk because he's standing in the back. So I might say, well, I have a ninth grade young lady or a, an eleventh grade young lady who says that she needs some service hours. And so she might have excelled in history and fill out a questionnaire for me over the summer. And I would pair her with your child to have an upper school tutor. There's no fee for that. The students get service hours, and so it's a win win for both students. You know that your children will all have an advisor, and they will have lunch with that advisor on Mondays and Fridays, and then also they will have time with the faculty member on Wednesdays during seminar. We have two dances per year, and this year I'm so excited. We are going to have the first annual eighth grade formal. We're going to hold that at Five Senses in about two weeks, and so the kids are really excited talking for sages and, and dresses right now. Um, we also have two trips a year. We just got back from a wonderful trip to Boston. Fifty students and I traveled with some of the faculty, and we made some wonderful memories. Now, there are cases where you might not want your child flying yet without you all and with us, um, and so there's never a penalty. The kids don't have class without the rest of their peers. They will also do localized field trips, so no one's missing out on any of the fun. Uh, the other trip is a camping trip in the fall, and so we spend one night at New Frontiers in Dowtown, Tennessee, and lots of memories. And again, that's another time for them to just make a new kind of confidence they may not have ever been hating or ziplining. And that's a new experience for them, and they really learn and grow on those trips. Further, we have a couple of service projects throughout the year, and I'm very proud that I feel like all of the middle school faculty, faculty, excuse me, really pride themselves on open communication. You will often see a teacher emailing you and saying, Johnny didn't come to extra help today. I'm worried about his grade. And so there's always that constant feedback, and you can email us anytime that you have a question regarding anything. Uh, that's about all that I have. I look forward to working with you all in the future. I'm excited to see a lot of little faces here tonight. Are there any questions? No questions? This is a real treat. This is a real treat. Anytime you get Miss Ann Chandler and Mr. <laughs> Raymond Pryor together, it's a treat. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Raymond Pryor, IT director. I also teach sixth grade focused computer arts along with Miss Chandler and with uh, Miss Sullins. And I teach seventh grade computer and then upper school AP computer and advanced computer. We're uh, going to talk to you today about this. Specifically sixth grade, but uh, we'll give you kind of an oversight of what's going on with technology at the web school. We're a bring your own device school, so your child can bring, is encouraged to bring whatever device they're most comfortable with. We're a Google Apps school, so you don't have to have a thumb drive, you don't have to have any, everything saved to the cloud. Uh, so homework is not an issue, you can work on it at school, pick it right up whenever you're at home and submit it to your teacher from home. Works great, kids love it, so uh, no more gotta go back and get my backpack to get my home. It should all be online. But anyway, Ann Chandler is the maven, the queen of textbooks. Who here hates textbooks? <laughs> Come on, I was just man. Not because of what you can learn from them, but the fact that they haven't changed dramatically in the last 200 years. I guess they used to be on parchment and uh, slate, but uh, textbooks are out of date as soon as they're printed. They are, because it takes uh, the lead time to get them printed and shipped out, in a year on some, even longer on others. Uh, they also, uh, thanks to the Texas Board of Education, tend, they buy the heavier book. If it's the same content, biology book, whichever one weighs more, they buy. It's the all-you-can-eat buffet syndrome, I think. Um, so they tend to get books or heavy. You might picked up a backpack of a, especially a high school or sophomore, not seniors, because they they don't have anything in their backpack. Um, sophomores and juniors, uh, 60, 80 pound backpacks are very common. Um, I'm holding one on my shoulder now. It's very uncomfortable. What's in this backpack right here is the normal backpack of books.
books for the sixth grade. Now, Ann, Sir. if you don't mind, you can start opening that. I'm going to pull up a little message. Uh, that little document you shared with me today. Oh, okay. Oh, by the way, uh, I know, uh, hold on, I'm getting Fred's, uh, Fred's stuff, so hang on. <laughs> My son is uh, uh, getting his master's degree at Ole Miss, and his roommate is a big Preds fan, and we, we talk. If you ever need to see the schedule, schedule.webschool.com. It's updated daily. Um, any special schedules are here, which you won't find on that uh, other, but you can go to schedule.webschool.com anytime, and it'll tell you what time and what period is needed. Uh, very, very convenient, and uh, Ms. Chandler actually updates it constantly, so if we have a speaker, or uh, like tomorrow we have chapel at the end of the day instead of at the beginning. So it'll be, she'll be adjusted. That is the yellow, the notebook yellow that notebook that Tabitha referred to. Um, we're working on the notebook. We're going to try to eliminate These are the what your sixth graders carry around every day. That's a normal sixth grade backpack. A normal backpack. sixth grade backpack every day. Every day. Except for incoming sixth grade for the 2018-2019 school year. And that's exciting because what they're going to have is, I hope we can reconnect. They're going to have this. This is a Chromebook. Very inexpensive. This is the iPad killer. If you've been doing any reading about it. Chrome is a Google product, uh, it's an operating system. It's very inexpensive, it's very safe. You can reformat it in 30 seconds. I can control what's on it. What they can access, I can find it like you can find your iPhone. If it gets lost, I can ping it and it'll draw, pull up a map and say it's sitting in so and so uh, and show exactly where it is. Uh, if it gets stolen, I can terminate it and it's useless to whoever's stolen it, so there's there's no real use, reason to steal it. But um, all the sixth graders are going to get one of these when they enroll during registration. They're all going to get a Chromebook. And on the Chromebook, going to be the equivalent of everything Ms. Chandler has right there. Every textbook is going to be on the Chromebook via the cloud. Some are actually going to be stored on it. But what we've done is uh, the, the reading books that are um, things that are classic literature, they're free. So the ebook versions of those are free at many universities. We downloaded those. So there's no reason to pay $7.95 for Hamlet whenever Hamlet is in the open source because. Shakespeare's been dead for a while. Um, but you see there's also an iPad in that stack. Uh, a lot of kids bring an iPad or a laptop. That will be eliminated by using this. Uh, and the total for the books that will go on here. Uh, and you may just verbalize it while I try to pull it up. Everything that I, that I purchased is $101.66 for every book for the sixth grade. And what was it last year? Last year, every new book was $285. So we brought the price down considerably by, like, we're using um, overdrive. We've heard of overdrive in libraries. We overdrive for our, some of our reading books. We're able to rent them for $1.17 for three months. Which as long as they're going to need it, they're going to come off the computer and we'll rent the next one for $1.17 for three months. We have several class book sets, so there will be no charge to your child for to read to read like this the prisoner book with the paper board. The focus books are, are a classroom set, so there's no charge to our students because we have classroom sets ready to go. Uh, our math books will be online. Our English books will be online. The teachers will be able to have a dashboard for them to look at the students' work. They'll be able to turn in their work to the dashboard. It basically lets, if this is the, all I wanted to do was change the platform. We didn't change the textbook, so we simply changed the platform. Same exact textbook, to, except it will be up to date. It will be, be up to date. Uh, and it's just, the idea. I took an online class, and it changed, and it was a disaster. But I also learned that there was things, besides learning Spanish, that I had to learn about how to do an online class. We send our kids out here academically prepared, but we need to have the technology prepared for the college aid classroom. So if we start now in the sixth grade, it's going to become an extension of their hands like their phone is now. And that's what we hope to have. And that's what we're doing. The technology should be secondary. In our opinion, technology supports the learning. The 
takes place here at the Webb School, it's not a substitute for learning. And everything that we, we try to do, like the Wi-Fi has no password. There's no reason to have a password. We have an honor code, we monitor, um, and that just is, that's a step of inconvenience. So if you ever come on campus and want to connect, go to the Webb School and connect. Uh, we try to make sure that technology is passive in the background supporting what our fabulous teacher and our teachers and our fabulous students do. Uh, and that's our philosophy. And I think that's it. Other than if if something you're breaks, afraid, you bring it to me. Of, if you're afraid of the, of the last stop, uh, we're going to be doing in classroom training. Yeah. You can come and join us. Right, in uh, sixth grade focus, uh, a minute ago you said you could use your parents' run web. No, you will get your own run web. The sixth graders will get their own run web. And that's because we're trying to teach them to check run web and email every day. Don't let mom and dad tell you what the email says about your homework. You find out what it is, add it to your calendar, know when the due date is. So, anyway, uh, rpriatwebschool.com. This summer, you got any questions at all, just give me, I'll be here all summer. Um, and we'll be getting all these Chromebooks ready. And if you have any questions at all? And if you're seventh, eighth, and higher, uh, you'll be able to check here as a new student. I'll be buying your books for you. You'll come in registration day. There'll be a blue bag. You'll just come in, pick it up, and you're ready to go. Yes. Right now, it's sixth grade. Now, if, you, if your child's a seventh grader and you want them to have a Chromebook, that's great. But we're, the school is going to provide a Chromebook to the sixth grade starting this year. Well, you can all, always get the ebook version. We have the physical books, and then we have an ebook version. It's up to you and whatever they're most comfortable with. And most of them, uh, most, most but not all. The ebook textbooks, they're finally settling down. There was a big controversy years ago. They couldn't decide which was the best way to go. Apple wanted it this way, Microsoft wanted it this way, Google wanted it this way. And they all fought for dominance in the uh, uh, school market. But they're getting better now. So uh, if you have an ebook version for the class, it'll be listed. And you can have that. If you email A. Chandler. Yeah, mm -hmm. put it on your own laptop. Mm -hmm. and then, but then our surprising <coughs> sixth graders this time next year, they'll go to the seventh grade, and we'll keep on going. Yeah, they'll carry it with them to the seventh grade. To the seventh grade. So when the seventh graders starting this year, say when they graduate, they'll still have annual books for the most part. Like, you guys are implementing this, like this class? Right, we're in a, it, it's going to work its way up. Uh, we just have to get rid of some of the older people like Mr. Broadhead to get them out. <laughs> <laughs> The, the stumbling blocks, as I like to call it. Uh, uh, right, and we're gonna, it's going to push forward. What, what, what we've seen in the past is the upper school starts to see how efficient and how well the middle school does, and they may want to. Also, we have teachers uh, uh, that are wanting to do more ebooks in class, and, and so that, that comes up. But uh, yeah, for the foreseeable future, there'll still be textbooks. Um, We'll try to lessen that as best as possible, but it's you're, we're getting a huge cost savings having Ann buy them for you because she can get a bulk price and split it up. And that like, we have like all our sampling for yeah. family friends, students, and we so like here we are the next Sure, <laughs> great. And, and the ISBN numbers are per, are available to you. You've got a route you want to go and do it somewhere else. More than happy. We want to make it easy for you. Um, in, in purchasing textbooks. And I could, yeah, if you'll let me know, I can let you make confirm that this is the right book. Yeah, because yeah. Our books do change, but yeah, just because in this email, you can confirm the, the titles for you. All right, anybody who's enrolled for next year, you want to contact me. Well, I, we can go ahead and give you your web school email address so you can start practicing. Start practicing checking your email every day. Uh, James, are you going to need this? Can you turn it off? Anybody else need it? Uh, well, I don't know. We'll leave it up for Andrew when he does online enrollment forms. Sure. I can, oh, I can be Vanna White. Do you mean pull up that section? Yeah, go ahead and pull that up. I don't know. It's London's. Yeah, London's. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Real quickly, I just kind of. Oh, question. Well, mine's not sixth grade, but what was the cost difference? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. If you want to have our eighth grade, I have it. Right. Uh, right. Cost difference. Uh, well, for the books versus a, the, a, a good pro book is around $160. Yeah, about so 50 more. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, iPads, 
the cheapest I've had is they've just come out with their cheaper versions <coughs> still three times more expensive. And they can have an iPad if they want. We're just, they're, it's too expensive to us. And if you go back to my room, you'll see all the broken iPads. <laughs> uh, they break easily. If $160 Chromebook breaks, we can fix it for around $40 if the screen breaks. And we fix it in-house. Okay, I don't know what you need to log in here. I'll do it, I'll do it. Do um, okay. I wrote real quickly because that part is very important. Mr. Garcia is going to pop back up here. In your packet, and those who are getting packets in the mail, you had a letter from Mr. Garcia, as he mentioned already, about the course scheduling process. Um, if you are a middle schooler, it's just a one-page document that basically says you need to email us and let us know what foreign language you want and if your child wants to take strings. It's that easy. And if you let us know that, then basically he has what he needs and he starts to work on your child's schedule and then it'll appear in Redwood. For those that are in ninth grade and above, you have his letter but also a form to fill out to register for classes. You can actually fill that out tonight. You can email that to us tomorrow. We give that to Mr. Garcia, and that's how he builds your schedule. But in that letter, I also believe it's Ann Chandler's email address because she's the one you want to speak with. Um, but if you want to write that down, her email is achandler at webschool.com. So she's the one that you will want to speak with if you want to order your own books or if you want her to buy all the e-books instead of paper textbooks. Um, she's here all throughout the summer. You can come here and physically meet with her during the summer and go over it. Whether you want to buy both, some parents buy both, some parents buy one or the other. And then um, just a reminder too, if you buy the textbooks, the paper books, we have a used textbook sale at the end of the year. So they are very expensive, but you do get the option to sell them back and do a, we have a used textbook sale. So I just wanted to throw that out as well. So. Yeah, we also do shop with it. We used to kind of use a middleman, now we don't. We, we go and shop for the textbooks ourselves, and so it's a lot cheaper than, uh, we used to go through classbooks.com, we had to go through middleman, they were a lot more expensive. So Miss Chandler does a great job with textbooks. <sighs> Thank you, because I'm not good with it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, contact her if you need anything this summer. Um, as far as what I have left on the agenda, uh, summer reading, the list was back there. Uh, we do one individual class grade read, so sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, they'll kind of have one different book. Um, throughout, and then we do kind of uh, one middle school where, um, where everyone, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, will read the same book, and then high school there's a different all school read. Um, so that's really, it kind of in the community gets us talking about the same book, uh, auto, you know, gives us the same read. Now we don't have, we used to do these big packets and all these tests and everything. Each kind of teacher does their own individual thing with it. Some might, I, I did a small little paper with mine this year. Um, so it just kind of varies, but uh, do make sure you have those books, the ISBN be, be numbers there for the all school read. Um, the other ones are sort of the tr more traditional reads and be able to find those pretty easily um, anywhere. So, uh, but if there's any questions on summer reading, just let us know. We've, we've sort of backed off, we just have a kind of a lot more, but we want kids to have more options throughout the summer kind of choose their own reading. So we, we do have two, um, unless the student's entering AP, there's a little bit more, but um, for the most part, it's just two books. Um, the other thing, Ms. Solon's touched on it for the middle school, but for the high school, one of our big selling points here at Webb, and I think it's a, big, a huge selling point, is our Emerging Voices program. Public speaking is such an important skill, um, and so we have uh, freshmen do declamations, <clears throat> sophomores do orations, they write their own piece and present it, juniors do some, uh, a junior project where they try to find their own interests and then they have to present it. And then seniors do a research paper. Um, they actually break off into small groups, so it doesn't sound as scary. But they actually have to add, answer questions based on their research. So um, we so they kind of break off into small groups and do that uh, through the Emerging Voices program. Um, this also sort of mentioned the advisory system to the middle school. High school students will also have an advisor. They'll work very closely with their advisor with the in that program. And each grade level has what we call a lead advisor that helps them guide them through that process. Um, so junior students would, would go first in that, and then at, uh, then freshmen, then sophomores, and then um, and then seniors at the end. So um, along with our advisor program, we don't meet as often as the middle school. Middle school has lunch together three days a week. There is on um, Tuesdays seminar time, but 30 minutes they, they kind of meet as advisors to talk about grades. Uh, we sort of have a curriculum that we follow that we, we talk about different things in advisory. But that advisor is uh, sort of your first contact. They'll contact you in the summer um, and ask you any questions, and then that's really who you, you 
can uh, go to first. We want you to build a strong relationship with them through, throughout your time at the web school. And um, so feel free to contact them once they, once they reach out to you. You'll also get your advisor when you get your schedule. You'll see something that will say seminar, and whoever's listed under that is your, is your advisor. Um, one thing we, we kind of, uh, we do the first of the school years, uh, if we have any freshmen here, we have a ninth grade field trip right off the first week, or out the bat, first week of school. Um, they'll leave on a Wednesday, they'll come back on a Friday. Um, and why we do that is because we used to kind of run it later, but we wanted to, um, you know, once, once the school goes on, people kind of have their friend groups, and the, we want the freshmen to sort of really, you know, form their, their strong relationship as a whole group in the beginning of the year. So we do that trip um, right off the bat in the beginning of the year, and it's, it, it, it's been very successful. Um, one thing that Solon's mentioned, the middle school, they have their field trip. We also have a ton of uh, international trips. Um, we go to Spain, uh, I think next year we're going to Italy, uh, Costa Rica, uh, Vietnam, so a ton, a ton of field trips uh, for your, uh, your students to take advantage of. There's a cost for that, but um, uh, very well attended by our students, very popular amongst our students. Um, and then one thing, I'm gonna throw a shameless plug in here. Uh, my wife actually uh, runs a program where she uh, places uh, French students in, in houses, and uh, if you go back to the table, I just put them back there. If you want, would like to host a, a French student for three weeks this summer, uh, we, we sort of love your help back there. It is a, it's something when I, when I got married, my wife's like, we're hosting a student. I said, we're doing what? I, it's my summer, no. And she's like, no, you'll enjoy it. Actually, it's a great experience, because you're, you're sort of getting to do do something that maybe you've done a million times, but somebody hasn't, and it's just a great experience for them. So, um, but that's that's about it. Is there any questions about the Emerging Voice Program or advisory or summer reading? All right. Well, thank you very much. I'll be back there right after if you, if you have questions. Thank you. Hi. Um, I'm Andrew McCready. I'm Dean of Students, and I've been here at Webb as a faculty member for the past three years. Uh, before that, I was uh, um, overseas for about two decades, but before that, I was a student here at Webb. I went to school by Julian, like Ms. Sullins, and uh, Mr. Hyatt back there. Um, a lot of us go to school here, and then we wind up back here, because it's, it's really a fabulous place to be. School. It's a, it's a wonderful culture, and um, we teach some very, very important values, things that are valuable for your child's future, and more importantly, for the world at large. Um, like I said, I'm the Dean of Students, and um, what I'm here to talk about, first of all, is the online enrollment forms. Um, you'll find the online enrollment forms under uh, your RIN web account. Um, when you, when you make up your RINWeb account, on the left-hand side, there will be a list of navigation points that you can go down and uh, work through. And there will be permission forms and information forms and things for you to electronically sign to let us know that you've, you've, you've read it, you've understand, understood it. Um, the most important things, though, uh, really, are the required medical forms. And I think you have copies of those in your packets. You must turn those in to us because um, if we don't have those required medical forms, if something happens to your child, we can't do anything. Um, so we have to have those required medical forms. Um, by state law, we have to have your vaccination records or your, your your child's vaccination records, and uh, they have to be update, updated. Um, one of the wonderful things that we have here, we have a fantastic health center, uh, and they have the ability, if, you, if your health records are on, the vaccination records are on a different state uh, form, or if you have a physician form, you can just bring that or a copy of that to the health center and they can transfer it from whatever form you have it on directly onto the state of Tennessee form and that way it's logged in in the state of Tennessee so you don't have to mess with that anymore it's all there in the state of Tennessee and we have to have that um, by law we have to have that we can't let your child start actually in school if we don't have your vaccination records and 
um, the permission to treat your kid if there's an emergency. So those are vitally, vitally important uh, for you to give those to us. Um, actually, really the only other thing that I'm here to talk about is uniforms. We have a school uniform and uh, our uniform provider is Land's End. Land's End is a fantastic company and the funny thing is when I was talking to them earlier this year, they one of the things, one of their slogans is that it's hand-me-down uh, quality. And the thing is, I have a senior and a seventh grader. Both have been here since we came in, uh, in uh, 2015. Yeah, 2015. Anyway, we bought used stuff from our WSPA uniform sale at the beginning of our first year. They're still wearing it. It's fantastic stuff. It looks great. It holds up. My son is a complete disaster. He's 14 years old, and he destroy. He actually loves to destroy clothing, and he has not yet been able to destroy these lands in uniforms. And so they're really, really top quality stuff. If you want to buy them new from Lands In, uh, that's absolutely fantastic. You just go to the Lands In website, and they have a section: men's, women's, children's, and school. And you just go to school. And then you can search for the web school bell buckle and up will pop our number and you can make an account with them and have all the things that you could possibly want and actually some things that you probably don't really want, um, but it's there if you decide you want it, um, that you can buy with the web logo on. I will tell you, all you need is enough Oxford shirts to get you from Monday to Thursday and perhaps a polo shirt if uh, your kid likes to wear polo shirts they can do that on Friday if they don't like polo shirts my son doesn't like polo shirts he just wears his regular Oxford shirt without a tie on Friday and so that's an option um, and then the appropriate bottoms in either khaki gray navy or black um, and those can come from Land's End, or they can come from anywhere else, as long as they're appropriate colors, yeah? Um, so, you can do the, you can buy those things new from Land's End. Um, we also have, up in our bookstore, we have some shirts of different sizes, and some PE stuff, and other polos that are up there, and they're at a greatly discounted price, because they're from our former uh, our former uniform provider. They're nice shirts, they're perfectly workable shirts, and so that's an option up in the bookstore. Um, and then I want to come back and stress again, our WSPA, they have, actually called the Uniform Exchange. And that's where you can buy uh, gently used, is, is the term they use, gently used um, school uniforms. Um, like I said, my kids got all their uniforms there and uh, they haven't destroyed them yet. And they're fantastic. Most of the kids actually like the slightly used stuff because it's been washed like 150 times and so it's all nice and soft. And so it's much better than getting the new ones out of the package and all, being all scratchy. Um, but really it's up to you. It's, it's some really nice options that we have. Um, do you have any questions for me? <coughs> yes, please. Um, that's a middle school. They are planning to do that. Yeah, they are planning to do that. Yeah, the middle school students have a required outfit that they wear. It's sort of shorts and a t-shirt. However, for the winter, for the winter time, they're allowed to wear um, navy sweatpants that they can get anywhere. Um, you know, you can get them at five for five bucks at Walmart. You know, rather than. They can wear the rest of the academic day. Yeah, and, and then they can wear that the rest of the academic day after their PE classes. Um, any other questions? Yes, please. Is there a requirement shoes or top shoes? Um, no flip-flops. Um, other than that, um, 
for the most part, it's, it's pretty open. Uh, but no, no flip flops, no rubber, rubber bones sort of things. Yeah. I have tonight. I have my cheater loafers on. You know, they, they, they look professional in the front, but it's, they, they're, they're scuffs. You know, they're, they're comfy. Uh, actually, I will say actually, that's a wonderful question. One of the things that your kid will definitely need, though, um, coming here to Web, because this this campus is huge. And they walk invariably from one class is going to be up at the gym, and the next class is going to be here in the big room, and then their next class is going to be in the fine arts building, and then they're going to be back over here, and then they're going to be over here. So they actually need a comfortable pair of shoes. That's the requirement. A comfortable pair of shoes that won't be destroyed by rain, snow, sleet, because no matter what the weather is, is be it scorching hot or be it hammering down rain, and it does that, um, you got to get from here to there and back and all around. Um, I also suggest a good solid umbrella. One that, one that uh, my daughter actually has a little bitty one that she carries in her backpack. Uh, my son just gets wet because he's 14. Um, but yeah, a good umbrella and good solid shoes. Um, any other questions? Yes, please. So, the question on the no large logos or pictures, if it's a case or a video or something, it just has, I mean, what? Yeah, if, if it says, yeah, that's okay, instead right. of, yeah, <laughs> right? <coughs> Seaside. No. Seaside. <laughs> yeah, under armor. Yes, no, under armor. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yes, please. Yeah, the only difference is the polo. They get to wear a polo. If they want, they don't have to. We've had a few jeans made for the year, and sometimes we'll ask that the child bring two or three dollars and we donate that to the work class. Yeah, that's one of the, the fundraising things that often the kids will do. Um, they'll have a jeans day, and they get two or three dollars donation, and they get to wear jeans that day. Uh, jeans and t shirts. And if, if they do, have a jeans day, we ask that the jeans not have holes in them, um, and the t-shirts that they wear, they have to be appropriate. Um, no, uh, well, you know what appropriate is. <laughs> um, any other questions? Well, um, I am actually finishing my role as Dean of Students this year, and I would like to introduce the incoming Dean of Students, Mr. Larry Folk. He's been with the school also since 2003. You have to come up here so they can see you on the screen. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's nice to see all of you. Thanks for coming out tonight. Thank you very much. All right, we are a little bit past our time, but we're almost done. So we're going to wrap it up while Coach Dorsett comes up here and finishes out. Uh, I do want to mention we should be sending an email. The WSPA will send an email about the uniform exchange because we do try to invite new families in the late summer, I believe, um, to have a first shot at getting the used uniform sale. And if you can't make that date, don't worry because they'll also be available on orientation day. There will be a sale. So there'll be two opportunities to buy a used uniform, usually the smaller sizes. So I recommend if your child is a high schooler, you're probably not going to get that many options in the used uniform exchange. Um, but it's a great, great uh, thing that our WSPA does. So, one other thing I wanted to mention: if you have a child that's a rising seventh grader, just note there's a new, there is an immunization shot for rising seventh graders. Um, so, if your child's a rising sixth grader, there's no new shots they need, but if a rising seventh grader does have a new shot, so they always find that out after the fact. And the kids not like, I'm going to be to get a shot. I promise I'll be quick. So. Uh, I apologize. I, I just came from a ball game that we had down there. Our seniors didn't get, uh, and baseball and softball didn't get uh, recognized this year because of this crazy weather. And uh, so we ended up kind of having an inter squad sprint scrimmage. And I said, Good Lord, we had the biggest crowd I've ever seen down there. They were tailgating there. I said, Man, we can't get that for a season game, but we get it for an inter squad. So I, I don't know how that works. Real quickly, too, I, and I'm proud of this. Uh, Coach Garcia, he does a tremendous job for our, our boys' basketball program, and he's an assistant coach. 
And I don't know if you guys, when you saw him at Visitor's Day, he might have looked a little bit different than he does today. But it was really nice to watch last night as I, I don't know what he was thinking, but prior to his season, he made a little bet with his team. And they said, well, what if we go to the state championship? You know, he, he said, district, no, I'm not doing it. Region, no, I'm not doing it. Well, he finally gives in on the state. So last night they had the joy of shaving his head. And uh, so that's his new look right now. And, and so I just wanted in case he's not sick or anything, but I just want you guys to know he's okay. And it, that's just kind of a new look he's got now. So anyway, the summer is, is, is kind of, we're trying to, to envelop it to be better and better. Uh, we have had some coaches that we're looking for and some that we just hired. So my report is going to be just a little bit behind that I'll send out and show you what these different teams are during, during the, they're going to do during the summer. You've got basketball back there. Coach Mitchell has put his out and what they're going to do and some of the camps that they have. Matter of fact, they've got one this weekend on Saturday that Coach Garcia, 9 to 10, do you say, and then brunch afterwards? Yeah, it's a plenty for kids. Ages 6 and up. Ages 9 to 10, and then actually brunch right after. Basketball. So it'll be up at, at Barton Gymnasium. Uh, and we just hired a girls basketball pro coach that we're excited about. Um, so these different things, and I'll, I'll be sending these out, like I told Julie, as soon as we get these roles filled and and the, the coaches give me their schedule so we'll get out as quickly as possible so you guys know. One of the most important things that I can say, you know, first off, you know, I would say try to get your kid, one of the things we're going into next year is we're going to require our students to, they're going to have to be doing something. And, and they're, you know, we, we want them to be involved. And that might be athletics, it could be fine arts, it could be a lot of different things. But we want them to be involved in, in, in doing something. So, I would encourage you to step outside of the box. You know, I've been at schools where it's been 2,500, you know, kids, and maybe even if you even thought about wanting to play, you didn't because you knew you'd never make it, you'd get cut. The great thing here at Webb, and we're competitive, don't get me wrong, you know, we're competitive, but everybody has an opportunity, you know, and we're not going to, these kids, I've seen, you know, all kind of different kids step out of the box and do something that they've never done before and it's been one of the greatest experiences in their life. If you have any inclination that your your students and your children are going to maybe want to play in any season, be it fall, winter, or spring, please make sure they get their physical. That's extremely important and at the first of the year and Julie, I think it's, I don't know where she ran, is it, is it, is it required for everybody anyway? Yeah, so, but it's really important because when we, again, just like I know I've heard previous people talk about up here, when we go to any matches or games or whatever, you know, our, we're lucky that we have a full-time on staff uh, athletic trainer, and she keeps up with all the insurance and all that. Matter of fact, unfortunately, one of my pitchers got just whacked in the arm tonight. She's in the emergency room right now getting an x-ray at her wrist. So, you know, that kind of stuff is extremely important, especially for boarders, uh, but even for day students, because, you know, unfortunately, we don't play a lot of people that are right here close to us. We don't have that many that are close to us, so we're having to travel. So that's a real important thing. I know sometimes uh, people forget about it and we're rushing to the last second to make sure somebody gets their physical and that kind of thing. So I, I'd say that's one of the most important things there. And again, I'll have this out for the, the full thing, just kind of give the full summer schedule here in the next week, week and a half, hopefully. Is there anything else you want to do? Yes, sir. One clarification. Uh, students are required to use one season. Or yes, one season. I'm sorry. I just I said one. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. And, you know, again, it could be that. I, I tell the one quick great story. I say I had a couple of girls. This is my ninth year at Webb, and I had a couple of girls play basketball for me, and they were all in in athletics. That's all they thought about. That's all they wanted to do. And I kind of pushed them, and I said, you guys need to do something different. So they go over to the fine arts, and they were in a play. They were in Alice in Wonderland, and they ended up being Twiddle D and Twiddle Dumb. That was perfect, because that's what they were, both of them. And I said, but it was one of the greatest experiences in their life. They did something 
that they've never done before. And that, that's what we really try to push around here, is to, to make sure that these kids are getting opportunities. And again, we're competitive. I, I promise you, our coaches work their rear ends off to get the most of our kids and, and teach them and help them to be the best that they can be. Uh, we just hired also uh, a new boys uh, middle school basketball coach that's also going to be doing some dual role stuff here in admissions and also in athletics, Donnell Dixon, and he's going to be a great addition too in helping that program. So uh, I think we've got some great people. We've still got a few roles that we're trying to fill. We're going to get filled, uh, but it's an exciting time. I think we got a lot of things going in the right direction. I'd be glad to take any questions real quickly from anybody who have them. Okay, so if you're interested in sports, say soccer, basketball, what have you, is that in addition to this schedule? That would be in the after, after you're talking about after school. After the school. Yes, after yes. School. So usually we start, there's usually extra help. So most of our coaches, you know, if, they're, if the kids get down there and they don't have extra help, they'll come and get to practice a little early. But most of the time, practices start at four and go to around 5.30 because the late bus, you know, rolls out then. So that's kind of the, the, how it goes. Now, you know, in middle school, a little, maybe it might be a little bit less, just depending on how their schedules go. But that's pretty much the standard of how it goes. And, you know, in, in our winter season, it's pretty much just basketball. Uh, we just got through with our crazy spring season where we got more sports than we can shake a stick at, and then we've got four major sports that we play in the fall. Any other questions? Again, I think it'll clear up too when I send you this and show you what the coaches are looking for, when they want them to come in, and what they want to see, and when practices actually start, especially for the fall sports, because that's the next thing coming up you'll be able to see that. And you're more than welcome to call me at any time, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions I can for you. Good. Thank you. Any other questions for Scott? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, okay, just a couple of things to wrap up. I just want to plug, as Coach mentioned and Mr. Garcia mentioned, the basketball clinic is happening this Saturday, and it's actually for six years and up, and it's co-ed. My little daughter, who's a second grader, Thomas Magnet, is going to be attending. Um, it's a basketball skills camp, and uh, some of these new coaches that Mr. Dorsett mentioned are going to be at the um, camp this weekend. So this Saturday, next Saturday, if you can't make it uh, those weekends, we also have a basketball skills camp this summer, the first week of June. And we also have a wonderful day camp. Um, it is for rising fourth grade through rising eighth grade. Um, and it's very STEM focused, but we also get to do our outdoor adventure program here. They'll be doing the zip line and walking the, the high ropes course. Um, it's a lot of fun, and they'll be doing Lego robotics, pottery. It's actually STEAM, not just STEM. So it's a really great camp. If your child is nervous at all about being on campus, highly recommend registering for one of these weeks because it really helps get them comfortable with being on Webb's campus. All the teachers are, are middle school faculty members at Webb. And um, our outdoor director is one of the faculty members as well. So these are back in the back. Um, probably you've gotten these in the mail, but grab one of these. Um, also, we did forget to put the daily schedule that was referred at the very beginning in your packet. So Mr. Hyatt was so wonderful to run into our office and make copies. So we have these in the back. Um, I really recommend getting one for every member of the family. This is something you really want to kind of study and get prepared for. It is very complicated, but. Um, I kept this in the front of my binder the whole year of my first year at Webb when I was a student because I never knew where I was supposed to be. So this is going to be your Bible, I guess, your first year. Um, is there anything else, any other folks from admissions that we need to cover tonight? Any questions? You know, there's a lot of information. Oh, I have pulled this up. This is our website. And on the top bar, if you go to Current Families, which that is you now, our Current Families, you will scroll down to registration and forms. Everything we discussed tonight is posted on the website with links to all the forms. So if you lose your forms and you need, and you, or if you want to do everything electronically, everything is on the website now at this uh, current family section. Okay. So, all right, we are done. Thank you for for being here tonight, and please talk to people.